45 ACP, baby. Two World Wars, baby. That 45 stopping power. Because it'll make a 46. What's going on guys? Roger here, QVO Tactical. Today we are taking a trip down memory lane, however, with a new modern twist. Today we're shooting the new Springfield TRP lineup. As always, guys, I'd like to let you know how I go about getting these products in for review. Um, you all know we have a good working relationship with the team over at Springfield. They reached out to us before launch of these guns, letting us know they were coming out. And they did send us to um, these guns free of charge for us to use for this video and for future content. So please keep that in mind as you watch this video. Um, we've been working with Springfield for the last like four or five years, and we have a great working relationship with the team over there. So uh, thank you to uh, Chad and Stephanie for getting these guns out to us. Uh, I'm pretty pumped that there is an actual commander version of the TRP operator now. Okay, with all of that out of the way, first round, to these guns. Uh, first one I'm going to shoot is the new 5 inch TRP operator, um, all done up, full murdered out, all black. It's really cool because every single uh, part of the gun is like the same black, so it's really got a uh, cool murdered out look. And then like I just said, the new uh, more, it's lightweight um, and uh, it's going to be the commander, like the four and a quarter inch um, TRP right here with the bobtail cut. So first rounds, just going to shoot some 45 grain, to, uh, sorry, 45, 230 grain and uh, Let's see how it goes, here we go. Shooting cardboard, uh, probably like seven yards away. Feels good, I like the weight. It feels really even, balanced out. Um, same recoil that I typically get from 45. I'm not running the weapon light or our thumb cliff or anything on this yet. We will later on in the video. Um, but I mean, I'll take this gripping all day long. My first round was here, I saw it. Adjusted my grip, got a tighter grip, and then, you know, fist size grouping. I'll take that with 45. Uh, now for the four and a quarter inch, this one, so I'll tell you guys, a little spoiler alert, I'm not a fan of bobtail cuts. For me, it kind of like hits me right in like the palm bone of my hand. Um, I get the reason for it with making it uh, less printing, less feeling it on your body when carrying concealed, which you know, comfort is a thing. You do want to have it be comfortable. But I'm also really interested because this is much lighter. So same thing, uh, 45 ACP, 230 grain. And uh, yeah, let's see how this goes in the new Commander. And I think this like tan, this FDE with the, um, the grips here, it's just a really clean look. Let's see how this feels. So it's a little snappier, um, it's not much more recoil, but I did notice my support hand sliding off. Um, just not a lot to hold on to with a thinner grip and then being that 45 recoil. The grouping is good though. All of these stayed in the A zone, so I did shoot a better group as far as accuracy goes. Um, and I mean, for concealed carry, being able to have that lightweight, that small of a gun um, in 45 concealed on your waistband is definitely an option for people. I'm running it with an eight round mag. I'm actually running it with the eight round mag that came with the full size because it's got the base pad, which I like. But uh, yeah. Um, this is, it's a little snappier than the full size, but it's not as snappy in regards to recoil. Um, as I, as, it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. So definitely manageable. Um, I am interested to put on, you know, some weapon lights with some of our thumb cliff um, uh, attachments to see how we can shoot and how fast we can do it. We'll do all that. I'm gonna have Gil shoot his first round and then it'll actually end this portion of the range session because Landon could make it out today. So we're going to just kind of shoot our first rounds and get some B-roll content. Uh, and then we'll come back on the range for the part two with uh, Landon here after SHOT Show to get his thoughts and then film the rest of the review. All right, we got Gil up now. Let's go full size first, bud. I know how much you love 45. <laughs> all right. Ooh, right off the bat, I do like the 
that aggressive texture on there so it allows me to get a better grip especially because I have super sweaty hands. Yeah, so right off the bat, like you said, the tan one's definitely super more snappier, obviously, because it's shorter. But definitely like the way the black one shoots, but I like the looks of the tan one. Gotcha. Let's go check out the uh, grouping here. How'd you do? I missed one. I started pulling a little to the left down here. Nicely. You kept it all in the A zone, man. So, I mean, for somebody who you dread shooting <laughs> anytime it's a 1911-45 day, he's like, oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, I just finally remember to be tougher on that grip. All right, we are back out on the range to get Landon's first rounds. We are all done with SHOT Show, bud. I know you couldn't make it out for the first thing with this, so we saved it for you. Appreciate it. 1911, 45, TRP operator, go for it. Man. Showcasings are messing up your car. Yeah, I heard them all, <laughs> but I couldn't get away from how good that group was printed out. Shooting 10 yards out, how are we looking? I mean, pretty. I, wow. You can't be mad at that, honestly. Gun track's true. I mean, it definitely has got a lot more bump than your standard 9mm stuff. Obviously, it's 45, but um, shoots really good. And the grips on that thing, the uh, checkering they got on that. Those are the VZ-10 Hydra grips. I don't care how sweaty your hands might get, uh, there's no way your hands are slipping on that gun. I mean, when you grab that thing, it's all gonna just stay locked on. And obviously you can get pretty good accuracy off of that. But I'm excited for the- uh, Commander length? Commander yeah. Length. yeah. All right, now the uh, four and a quarter inch Commander. This one's definitely a lot less. I actually shot this one better in the first like rounds we did. Yeah. I was surprised. Let's see. The concussion just on the side of the of the gun. I mean, yeah. So honestly, the just right away picking the gun up, I was nervous because it is light. I mean, this is a. This feels like a almost like a Sig Macro in my hand, like the weight wise. But we still shot it pretty much the same as the full size. Triggers out of the box on these guns are really good. I'll say that for sure. Like there is, and it's only going to get better. But the trigger on this gun is solid. Even though it's lighter weight, I was still able to control the recoil and manage it. I mean, we're gonna see when we do build drills and stuff with that cadence, how I can control it there. But first shots, it's uh, it's pretty impressive being such a lightweight gun and they fit really good in the hand. I mean, there's not a, it's a really slim profile off these guns. But yeah, I like them so far. All right guys, we are gonna run some build drills now, but for a little fun, since we have the lightweight commander version and the full size five inch model, Landon's gonna run his build drills from OWB, five inch full size. I'm gonna run from concealment in our more discreet holster with the lightweight commander version. Both have X300s, both have the thumb cliffs, and we are gonna go one for one, and we'll do three build drills each. We each get one mulligan, and we'll see who gets the uh, best of three. All right, I'll go first, here we go. Seven yards out. Looks like I got, ooh, that might be, see the one, the cool thing about 45, the line breakers. So 234, first shot was a 137, best split 17. That is not a line breaker, did not break the perforation. So four alpha, two Charlie for a 234. Four alpha, two Charlie, 234. I'll mark my hits in black, he'll mark his hits in red. Oh my God. That was a 206. Oh, whoa, whoa. We don't have to go look at the target. Uh, we don't have to go look at the uh, target at all. Uh, so these 45s are so scary. The cardboard actually got out of the way <laughs> as I was breaking shots. Uh, in case you can't get my sarcasm, I landed three out of the six hits. So first round goes to me. <laughs> or you, is that you, you can take your mulligan. Oh, you know, no, 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 no. You don't no, want to you no, can take your mulligan that now? That was just embarrassing. Let's just. You don't want to take your mulligan? No. It's a redo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so you take yeah, mulligan? Yeah, okay, so mark those. Mark those in your red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So this is. So now you don't have a mulligan later. I got a little bit of trigger freeze. 227, best was a 16 there. 
seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it did not break. That would be a Bravo though. Yeah, no, and for sure. That is definitely plus two seconds. What we got right here. Well, that'd be plus one. Cause it's, that would be a Bravo. In the, in the USPSA targets, isn't, this, isn't the head not, not in the hair, it's a B, right? Oh, this is Charlie. It's all Charlie. They don't do Bravo here for the headshots uh -huh. anymore? Oh, mm -hmm. wow, okay. Charlie, and then got the Alpha right there. But yeah, uh, 45 did split the line right there. Thank goodness for that uh, bigger diameter. And all right, first all first round's mine. Let's go second round. Here we go. Here. All right, here we go. Round two. Stand by. That looks clean. Hey, 218. First shot, 128. Best split was a 16. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six. 218 clean, bro. Ooh, that, that looked good. What was oh, 191, bro. 191. Uh, you got a Delta, though. <laughs> Dude, hold on. So, two, oh, three, and four, you got a Charlie. Five. So that's two and three, six. five second penalty. Yeah, we. we <laughs> Still, 191, that's blazing. I can already see what my main issue is. It's like, um. You just want to go fast? <laughs> just, uh. Not ready for that 45. <laughs> when I start breaking shots, it's like, oh. Look at this though, dude. Two rounds right there. Yeah. Now we're uh, speed there. Let's uh, let's actually get a clean run, huh? Well, hold on, hold on. It was best two out of three, dog. Oh, that's right. We still got a. No, I just won. That's two out of oh, three. Oh, that was two out of three. <laughs> Good match. And just like that, it's over. At the first. So Mikey at Ventura, I, I Landon said I get to win a free gun or a thousand rounds of ammo. Just saying. Yeah, he gets one of those Turkish shotguns. <laughs> All right, guys, I want to jump in here and give you an up close and personal look at the trigger. But before we do that, I want to show you guys this. Check out these Chip McCormick Power 10s. I get a lot of questions about these magazines. These are what I carried um, on patrol, as you can get 10 rounds with these single stack 45. Our buddies over at Chip McCormick sent us out uh, a couple of these and a couple of the eight rounders here I'll show you in a bit. But uh, for those wondering, they are the Chip McCormick Power 10s. Um, you can pick them up on Brownells. You can pick them up directly from Chip McCormick, but uh, they are my favorite mag to run because they give you an extension here and they do a really clean look, especially with magwells. So now let's take a look at this trigger. Well, very little take up guys. The uh, same trigger you'd expect from the TRP lineup. That's all, that's your wall. The brake reset is here, very slight. Um, if you're shooting rapid fire here, good to go. And again, that reset. It's audible, it's tactile. Like this is a great gun for when you get on that trigger, you know exactly where the wall is. And if you have to take that shot, boom. Or if you get on there, you can fill that wall and come off if you need to. Um, but yeah, it is definitely like for, for what the TRP lineup is, it's a trigger you would expect. And uh, yeah, I really enjoy it. All right guys, here is that eight round Chip McCormick mag I was talking about. These are very nice as well. As you can see, it fits nice and flush and clean in the mag well. Um, I also want to take a second to do a shameless plug on our QVO Tactical Thumb Cliff uh, for the X300A model. If you guys haven't seen that video, definitely check it out or you can check the product out on our website, qvotactical.com. But it's guns like this, chambered in 45 ACP, where we can really see this uh, product shine because it's gonna let me use my support thumb to really drive down that muzzle rise on the recoil. Shooting some A-zone steel about seven yards out, you guys can see it here. So it just lets me track that front sight, boom. Kept them all, you can pin over that target. Shooting that little A-zone target that just fell down right now. All that stopping power from the 45. But yeah, um, definitely where I enjoy using this a lot because I can just take my, my support thumb and just drive that muzzle down to uh, mitigate that recoil. All right, guys, we did leave the rangefinder over the truck, but we were shooting some other stuff out here, so we know that this this little like can of lighter fluid is 60 yards out. So, Landon is going to shoot the five-inch TRP from 60 yards. I'm going to shoot with the lightweight Commander model, and uh, let's see if we can get on uh, steel here. C-zone steel, 45 ACP. Go for it, bud. Nice. Third shot, irons only. All I'm right. not gonna lie, I could see the first shot, the bullet track it through the air. <laughs> oh. Hey, oh. We're shot for shot here at the QVO Olympics. <laughs> 
All right, let's take it back to, I think on this berm was like 90. Yeah. All right, back here at the 90 now. All right, I'll take the first shot land in. Here we go. You good, Gil? Good. Oh. Hey, oh. First shot, shot, 45 ACP. All right, man. Let's edit that ding in later. <laughs> Nice. First shot. You saw it here first on the QVO channel. <laughs> All right, I will say this. So we just got done shooting a different video where it was like, man, using those irons, we couldn't hit the hit the steel at this distance yet. You know, you were talking about, you shoot irons a lot. You were talking yeah. about how like, hey, there is a thing as such as like good irons versus bad irons. You, you unfortunately just had some irons break on your comp gun, but. It does happen. Irons can fail, man. I mean, but the more like precise aiming point of a red dot, I mean, when you back up at any distance, even 25 yards, being able to have like a fine reference point, you're going to have better accuracy just playing right. this day. This front sight literally covers that whole C zone at this distance. <laughs> so I'm having to just be as steady as possible and break that trigger. And you know what I mean? Just follow, follow the shots. You know, if you're low, all right, I'm going to have to cover that whole target with my front sight. And again, like we talk about in other videos, guys, would we be shooting 90 yards in real life? No. I would not be taking this shot in real life. I can't really think of a defensive situation where I'm taking a, a 90 yard shot with a handgun. Additionally, uh, would I be carrying, like being honest guys, carrying these, like I might carry this one because it's just, it's cool as shit, like the color, the whole setup. But realistically guys, I want capacity. You know, we're talking these guns only like, with an extended mag only has 10 rounds in it. So, you know, it's not gonna be like my, my Sig X macro, I'm running 17 rounds in that. Oh, yeah and it's way smaller. So, you know, I'm, am I gonna carry these? Probably not. But, you know, for you guys out there that are all about the 45 ACP, you know, you do want that quote unquote stopping power. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, <laughs> the fact that the steel does knock over, that there's something to be said, but. Yeah, that's real science happening. Like yeah. that's not just, oh cool, it knocked it down. Like, no, if you dumped nine mil at that target, it would definitely move, but it wouldn't knock it down like a 230 grain weight bullet would do. Uh, your standard nine mils like 115 grains, yeah. right? We are doubling that mass. At the same time, before anybody goes on the internet or goes on Reddit and says, hey, QVO says, you know, it's all about stopping. No, I'm all about round placement, guys. Shot so placement. shot placement to me is key. Yeah. So like me, I, I the only reason I like shooting 1911s, uh, or, or sorry, the only reason I'm shooting the 45 is because that's what the 1911 is in, these ones specifically. So I'll talk about what I would like to see from Springfield yeah. in the final thoughts, don't get me wrong, but you know, we're just having fun out on the range. If you're taking these guns out, I'm very surprised that I was able to hit this with a, four and a, a commander length four and a quarter inch 45 at this distance. All so. the 1911 guys are like respecting you right now. They're <laughs> like, we're gonna represent the 45, man. Ah, don't worry, before the end of the video, I'm sure I will drop the slide on an empty empty gun and they'll be like, ah, forget this guy. <laughs> so, all right, let's head back down. All right, guys, while out on the range, I wanna take a minute to talk to you guys about magazines. So when you buy these guns, the lightweight Commander model is gonna come with a flush eight round magazine. Uh, I believe it's a Metgar mag, but you'll see here, there's no base pad on it. So it's nice and flush. You'll see B-roll of this in studio as well. Um, but that mag is really flush, comes with it. If you buy the full size model here, it's going to come with uh, a Metgar eight round mag again, but this one has a base pad, so it mates up really nice. Um, I went and bought a plethora of magazines from Chip McCormick. They sent us uh, four mags, but I also went and bought a bunch of their um, black stainless mags. I really like the coating on here. Um, these mags are a little pricey. I believe it's like 40 bucks a mag. Uh, KCI also makes a really good um, single stack magazine for the 1911 and 45 ACP. Uh, you might see these on the website soon because we're laser engraving them to get a cool tiger stripe pattern. With it being stainless steel, I have a Mopa laser that's gonna let me change the color and get you guys a cool pattern like that. Um, I do want to show you guys though, how the mags work, make sure they're all functioning. We're cycling and lock back and all that stuff. So uh, let's take, here's the Metgar mag that is stock that you get with the gun in the Commander. Boom, cycles. We'll switch out to, let me put a round in here on the flush mag that comes with this Commander model. If I can get the base plate, there we go. So we should get two rounds fired and lock back. Boom. The mags that comes with work. Um, here is the KCI 1911 single stack mag. Boom. 
good cycling and lock back there as well. You guys saw the Chip McCormick's, we'll shoot the full size one. Here's the Chip McCormick uh, eight rounders. Those are good. Let's just finish that off on some steel. Boom, and lock back. So guns are cycling great with a plethora of magazines. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you get any 45 single stack 1911 mag, it's gonna work well. Um, I really like the base plate look inside this mag well, and even on the Commander one. So if we're going eight round mag, I think that's a really clean and flush look. So again, if you want some of these Tiger Stripe laser ones, hit up our website, qbotactical.com. All right guys, one thing I did want to do out here on the range was to bring out my OG Springfield TRP operator. This is my old school one, the one I carried on duty here in Las Vegas. Full length dust cover rail. Um, this gun has thousands of rounds through it. Uh, originally purchased back in like 2003, 2004. Um, but yeah, bull barrel, full rail. Um, same checkered strapping on front and back, same magwell. Um, little different style of a trigger, but feels the same. And uh, I figured let's do Pepsi Challenge. We'll shoot yep. them side by side and see what we both think. Um, yeah, so I'm going to shoot the old school one first. I'll shoot like five, six rounds and then switch up and see how the other one feels. Here we go. No thumb cliff on this one either. Man, such a different recoil impulse with that thick bull barrel, the little added weight. So I really think having a full length rail, the weight there, having the much thicker bull barrel. That all matters. It definitely, like side by side, because we were just shooting the crap out of these. Oh yeah. And don't get me wrong, they feel great, but I definitely noticed a recoil difference. So now I'm gonna shoot the new TRP full size. Yeah. I mean, it, it just recoils like a 45. This one feels uh, significantly less. Like I can tell there's definitely a difference. I'm gonna have Landon, you go ahead and shoot it, man, before I talk more. So you got two mags there. Like you said, we've been shooting the other ones a lot and it's uh It's noticeable. It's an immediate difference, but obviously I'm not gonna turn down shooting a gun. So. Yeah. <laughs> your car <laughs> that poor hood uh yeah so no surprise i mean obviously there's some extra things on this gun that do help mitigate it but the initial like recoil impulse there's a lot more snap to it, like like a better term. you know what it reminds me of it reminds me of like shooting 45 suppressed that's what it feels like yeah like a little it's, more it's sluggish a, yeah impulse. it's a little sluggish a little muted um it's not as 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 much oomph as much kick um as the newer trps don't get me wrong these are still great guns we're gonna talk about the pros and cons at the end but you know i did want to bring out the one that started it all for me um and i do believe they're still making these i know that it's so. california compliant so i'm still pretty sure that they're putting them out there for all the california guys um but it'll be um it, it is you know, at the same time, I got thousands of rounds through this gun, but I definitely immediately noticed a difference in felt recoil. Yeah, no, anytime you have more weight up in the front of the gun from that bull barrel or from this full length- um, Pick a tail rail, yeah. Yeah, that is gonna help the gun return back to target a lot quicker. And it was a immediate- You know what, just for fun, let's do this. Let's let's pop on the, uh, the thumb cliff on this bad boy. Oh. Let me get it on the rail here. I might have to use an Allen, there we go. Pull that out. Nope, we're gonna have to use an Allen key to, oh, one attention. second. <laughs> we just have to loosen the metal wedge, guys. If you haven't watched our video on setting up the A model to use a metal wedge, definitely check that out because it makes night and day difference. If you have an A model to take out that wiggle, they do include a metal wedge um, with a crossbar, which in my opinion makes this may, way more solid than the B model. All right, so now using the thumb cliff, with this being able to really push down bro okay so that feels like straight up nine mil now and again i ride a very high support hand which is pushing down that slide stop so that's why i don't get locked back but holy cow try that landon yeah i got enough there's two more <laughs> of 
Crazy, uh, right? So I'm definitely like, <laughs> guys, this is my own product, so take that into consideration as well. But the thumb cliff, I made it, you know, as a ledge, gas pedal, cliff, whatever you want to call it. Um, there's a full video coming out, that check it out, like I was talking about earlier. But I definitely, like significantly notice it on this. Once you know where to apply pressure on this thing, it is absolutely like an enhancement for control and recoil. Um, like we were talking about this a while ago. Like if you haven't used anything like this or just used to putting your thumb high and forward, you might not know how to apply pressure on it. You're like, I don't know. It's not mitigating the recoil like I right. want it to. But dude, after just two rain sessions with this thing, this is my second rain session with that and already I know how to apply pressure on that and the front side I'm will trying to get him to switch his TLR1 to a X300A. <laughs> I'm having to save up a couple pennies to buy a three X three hundred, but it'll happen. But dude, the this gun's still valid. You know, I understand the new stuff is here. It's a tight fitting gun. I like a lot of stuff about it, but you can't deny a bull bear on a full right. length rail. You know, it's still. We'll we'll do this, guys. This video gets twenty five thousand views in the first week. We'll buy you an X three hundred A. All right. So like, share, subscribe. You on your couch, <laughs> please like this video. You taking a poop right now. Yeah. And yeah, help like, me out. Share, subscribe, turn your notifications on, do all that fun stuff. But yes, I'll check this video in seven days from when it goes live. If we have over 25, 25,000 views or more, we'll buy you an X300A model. Let's get this Hawaiian an X300. I need one. <laughs> we all need one. All right, Gil. I know you're not a huge fan of the 45 caliber, but I did want you to try these side by side with a thumb cliff on the old school versus new school. So shoot the new TRP first, go for it. Just go ahead and mag dump that. Go ahead and grab the other one now, load it up. The OG TRP operator with our thumb cliff. I'm actually gonna come around to this side so I can see. Make sure you just engage that thumb cliff. Go for it. Oh yeah. Trigger freeze, man. Dude, I mean, I don't like 45, but this one, man, with the thumb cliff and that bull barrel, that feels pretty good. You might've turned me. How do we get you to like 308? Never. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on that. All right, guys, here are your specs on the new TRP lineup from Springfield Armory. For those of you who don't know, a little history on the TRP from Springfield Armory. The FBI hostage rescue team chose the Springfield Armory Professional as their issued duty gun. That collaboration inspired the tactical response pistol known as the TRP. This was developed to deliver the performance of the FBI's custom pistol, but in the semi-custom category. These new TRP offerings from Springfield are made from a forged frame and slide to ensure durability. Each slide and frame is then hand selected and numbered with their matching components throughout the entire build process. This results in a premium fit with amazing performance. Features of the TRP lineup include ambidextrous safeties, skeletonized hammers and skeletonized triggers, a two piece magwell and serrations throughout. The TRP also features front strap checkering in conjunction with the VZ Hydra grips, which allows you to get a very solid purchase on the firearm, whether your hands are slippery or even if you are wearing gloves. Additionally, this new TRP lineup now consists of a lightweight carry model, which is made from forged aluminum alloy. The grip is also bobbed at the end to reduce printing, but still allowing a full comfortable grip. This feature is available on the 4.25 inch commander length TRP 1911. While out on the range, we did utilize two of the holsters that we offer here at QVOTactical.com. Landon was using the outside of the waistband secondary model, which features multiple points of adjustable retention, as well as different belt attachment methods. His holster also featured our comic book fabric overlay, which is a nice throwback to some of our childhoods. I was using our inside the waistband, more discreet holster for the carry contour model. This holster features multiple points of adjustable retention as well, and uses a metal monoblock clip for extremely secure belt attachment. This holster is made from licensed Cry Precision Multicam Arid Kydex, and also features a holster wing, which pushes against the belt, aiding in concealment and preventing printing. All right guys, before we hopped off the range, we wanted to uh, come up here and just give you our final thoughts on the whole new Springfield TRP lineup. Um, let's start with the pros, go to the cons, do yep. it that way. Let's do it. Um, for me, first and foremost, you guys all know, like the Springfield TRP operator is my carry gun in law enforcement here in Vegas. So these, you know, they have some nostalgia with me. I really do enjoy the, the Springfield 1911 TRP lineup. Uh, I am really digging 
the Cerakote colors. Um, I originally only wanted this Coyote one. They ended up sending me this fully blacked out one, which at first I was like, eh, but then it kind of grew on me because as you guys look at the B-roll that Gil brings in on the specs right now, you're gonna see how the gun is completely murdered out. Like every shade of black is the same, which is really cool. Like down to the VZ Hydra grips, to the checkered strapping, everything is like the same shade of black. I really dig that look, especially with the um, the Chip McCormick mags being, you know, uh, the, the black uh, stainless steel. They look really clean on there as well. Like the uh, matte finish, right? Yeah. But yeah, these VZ Hydro grips, man, that thing's not coming out of your hand, yeah. no matter what. Um, if you ever get sweaty hands or something like that, you grip this gun, and I think it's 25 lines per inch. 20 or 25, I'm not sure. It's, it's, it's aggressive. It's aggressive, but... But it's needed, in my opinion. Like That, that kind of like it really aids in the mitigation of the recoil with the 45. 45's got a little more oomph to it, so you're going to want that grip texture. I mean, even on you know your standard guns, this is what I'd like to see on majority of guns, but this does add to the cost of the overall pistol. You know what I mean? And you are going to pay a little bit for a TRP, but in my opinion... Oh. Yeah, but I mean, like you're, we were talking earlier off camera. Like more goes into it. Like if you guys yeah. were to, when you get, when, if you buy a TRP and you take it home and you and you and you take it apart, you're gonna see like scribed numbers on the barrel, the slide, the frame, and then all matching numbers because somebody took those parts, hand fitted it, matched them all up to give you that really, you know, tight tolerance precision fit. It's not just an off the shelf 1911. You don't get this kind of fitment on a barrel or a slide with just slapping parts together. Like there's a lot of budget tier 1911s around. I've seen them even for 400 bucks. We sell 19. 11s for right around 450 bucks and uh, it does not have the fitment like this they are gonna run 100% they're reliable but when you really want to get that accuracy like when you want to take your 90 yard shot with a four and a quarter inch barrel you're gonna need some of that better yeah. fitment to be honest uh, and consistency too you can do it repeatedly with these guns speaking on the four and a quarter guys I did not think I was going to like this bobtail mm. um, Honestly, I've shot other 1911s with the bobtail cut and it kind of hits it me is the palm weird. Yeah. This feels great in the hand. So I'm really happy that they sent me this commander length one. Like I talked about it before, like I probably wouldn't carry something like this, but honestly, there might be some times where I might carry this, like the slimline form factor. Like, you know, maybe I'm wearing a suit at a wedding and I'm gonna run like- It's a know, classy gun. Yeah. It's a classy it's, gun. It is, and I really like it. Um, magazines. That shit can still better though, right? Exactly, like, that's what for. Yeah. Um, where is that flush here? So it comes with these mags and Gil, we're rolling some better B-roll that you guys can see how flush it is. Um, they do come with those and that aids in concealment, but me, honestly, Lane and I were both talking, I prefer having like the bumper, like running this KCI mag with the base pad that's right there or even the uh, Chip McCormick's. I like having that little bump out there. Yeah, cause like, um, it looks clean to me. It looks good. Um, it's even, functional. Yeah, even yeah. the stock Mechgar mags that it come with, like those Mechgar ones that flush up in there, that looks really good too. Just yeah. having that little bit of base pad on the bottom when you're going to run that mag in there, like in a match or Just even like- send it home for real. Yeah, correct. Instead of having like this flush fit aesthetics, I get it, looks great. But dude, I can't tell you how many times, like if there is a flush fit mag in a gun, like if you're trying to do that into a mag wall here, yep. under stress, I mean, it hurts. It hurts. It hurts. You'll get. You'll get there. You know what I mean. But yeah, hundred percent. Something with the bumper there, and you could conceal this gun. I mean, it's definitely light enough, and you're rocking. What are these holes like? That'll eight? be eight plus one to nine. Like a, nine rounds of 45. I always want as many rounds as I can get. You don't know how many you need, so I want. We are not <laughs> saying carry this over your 17 round Sig 365, guys. I so don't don't take it like that. I carry a macro. It's 17 rounds. Um, is that enough? I don't know, but it's as much as I'd like to have in my Hope body. Hope we don't have to find out. Yeah, correct. But for being, you know, a single stack, it's comfortable. The recoil pulse isn't that bad. The trigger is really good on these guns. And uh, yeah, you already got tritium night sights, so yep. it is set up for carry. So if you're a big 45 guy, Look I at think these, yeah. yeah, this is more than valid to carry every day. So pros, we got the aesthetics, <laughs> nostalgia, the accuracy behind, the trigger feels good, the grip, the, the VZ, the VZ the hydro, uh, hydro grips all the way down to the checker strapping, the magazine, the fact that it's working with all those mags across the board that you guys saw earlier. Liking all that, the Picatinny rails. Now, let's jump into the cons, guys. Uh, for me, what I really want Springfield to come out with. You know, you guys are always telling me, hey, you got, you work with Springfield, ask them for this, ask them for that. The one thing that I would ask from Springfield for, I would love a TRP operator, nine mil, with a bull barrel, optic cut, double stack. And not, not a polymer mo grip module, like a full metal frame double stack magazine 1911. Like true 1911 where it's an all metal one piece design for the frame. That would be like my dream gun. Yeah. And then throw on some like compensated ports. Maybe like the old school, like the old school Glock compensation where they just do the two little slits. Yep. Something absolutely. like that. Some, it's just nice and sleek. Doesn't have to be crazy ports. like what we've been doing. But that would be my ideal thing. Just spice so, it up a little bit. You know, I, I think it's no secret on what customers want. Like yeah. you know what sells good. Optics cut sells good. 
it also has a higher resale value if you ever end up you know not really liking that particular firearm and then also too bull barrels help with recoil that is a fact that's yeah, not an aesthetic yeah. thing it's not because i'm like oh the bull barrel looks so much sicker on that gun um full length rail though that my understanding does, is it it, yeah. it aids with recoil it aids with accuracy Correct. it aids with like the barrel is going to last much longer there's a reason why this gun's 20 years old and honestly on the range it did feel better shooting this you know versus the newer ones um i will say the triggers felt the same yeah but they added weight in the front um, like I don't mind that this doesn't have a full Picatinny rail. I don't mind the three quarters rail. It looks clean to me and fine. I do really wish they would have put a bull barrel in, one of, in, in these models. Uh, yeah. And the other thing that's a con for me, it's like I believe the MSRP went up a hundred bucks. So it's like it went up a hundred bucks, but the bull barrel's not there. So they took away what I would have really wanted from that gun, which is the the recoil balance of a bull barrel. Um, and it seems to be across the board. I mean, a lot of people that were commenting on our initial, like, just our short form videos that were talking about the new lineup coming out. They were already commenting on yeah, that like, hey, too. What's, what's, so. Yeah, I mean. I think, at the same time, guys, yeah. like, if you're looking at nice 1911s, these are very nice 1911s. And again, we, you know, we were shooting 90 yards away, hitting no problem. So yeah. as far as accuracy Easy goes, day. it's there. But I will say, like, it was night and day difference feeling the recoil between the two. And I will say this, like, we shot my old, old school TRP operator during the thumb clip video. And we noticed a little bit of like recoil mitigation, like the felt recoil yeah. felt less. But when you shoot them side by side, that's it's like it's like Pepsi challenge. Like if you if you're drinking Pepsi and Coke, well, I mean now if you drink Pepsi and Coke, you can tell the difference. But before, if you'd have to drink them side by side to really know like a cola versus the Pepsi versus whatever. So I really feel like but putting 200 something rounds through this and then yeah. coming and putting. 10 rounds to that gun, it was immediate. I didn't even have to second guess it. That gun shoots flatter, and we, we both know why, you know? It's yeah. not because there's some weird magic going on. It's just having more weight up in the front of the oh, gun. There's some science magic in the front. <laughs> yeah. That, and then, well, yeah, I mean, adding a light, so being able to do that. So they did, on the on another note for positive, they did listen about having a rail 1911. And for you guys that don't like the rail, and you're all about the pure 1911 thing, they do offer the new TRP line oh. without one. Okay, yeah. yeah, if you want to go that route, I mean, cool. I mean. But I mean, a lot of people don't have come, been don't asked. come hang out with us. But. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know what I like. I, I prefer to have the rail on the front of that gun, especially if I'm going to run a light here. Um, this one really impressed me, though. The, yeah. The four and a quarter, the I, lightweight commander TRP operator, like that thing, like it, it was very shocking to me. I'm not a fan of the bobtail until this gun. Um, it is like you, you nailed, dude. Classy. Properly it's executed. Classy. Yeah. yeah, it is a classy gun, and it shoots great. Um, but yeah, I think the only only complaint that I have is the bull barrel. Other than that. Guns are impressive. They do stack up to other high quality 1911s in my opinion. Um, the thing is too guys, like you know this, people will, are gonna buy them. People come into your shop and buy Springfield 1911s all the time. The TRP name has like a high regard already so they probably will end up getting into this. But I, I think it's no secret like what people really wanna see is gonna be an optics cut in the future. You know? I hope and, man, like yeah. I, I really hope that you know, somebody's watching this video that has a say and they go, you know what, let's make a double stacked real 1911, so real metal frame um, with an optic cut bull barrel in nine mil. Like, oh my God, we were running double crap stack. out of Double stack. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, oh man, Springfield, if you're listening, double stack all steel. Um, so. And you can do the ports later, you know? But let's start, let's yeah. start a little slow, but <laughs> we'll buy them all. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. But on a serious note, like I do want to say thank you again to Springfield Armory. Uh, Chad, Stephanie, you guys are always taking care of me. I appreciate it. Um, we enjoyed shooting these. Uh, I am, you know, Stephanie, thank you for sending this one. I am pleasantly surprised mm -hmm. at how much I like this little guy. Like, I mean, he nailed it. This is a classy setup. Um, we actually had some officers that were working in the area come check these out, and they were like, they immediately, it was like, oh man, a plain clothes detail with this would be awesome. So um, thank you to Springfield Armory for sending these out. Oh, yeah. um, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, I think we've talked your ear off enough. So again, if this video gets up to 25,000 likes in the next week. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, don't, get... don't forget, 25,000. <laughs> so make sure you like, subscribe, share the video with your friends. Let us know what you think down below in the comments section. Um, and would you guys go buy these? Like, are you guys out there that have been on the fence about getting a 1911, a nice 1911, like a buy once, cry once? Is this the one for you? Let us know. Um, and again, appreciate you watching. We'll see you in the next one.